hold on, elaborate on this some more because, okay, uh, jails for bad people, these people are in jail, they must be bad. What are you doing, I mean, representing, uh, is there a label on them? That they're ter I, I don't know really much of anything about it except what you, you actually brought it to my attention. Fill us in because someone says, what do you represent terrorists for? What, what's going on with this? <laughs> Fibrosis is a, is a lung disease, and uh, his daughter needed surgery just to live. And Shukri was able to find a charity who funded his daughter's surgery. But Shukri said that changed his life. He said, I am a Muslim and I love to give. So he left his job. He quit. He founded a charity. He put his heart and soul into a charity that grew to be the largest Muslim charity in the United States. They were mainly giving humanitarian aid to Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, as well as uh, the refugee populations in Lebanon and Jordan. And then they also gave to other needy populations across the world. What was going on in this country was a charitable activity, one that is protected by our Constitution, one that I believe uh, the five people that have been subjected to this trial are not guilty of committing any crime, but have been persecuted because of where they are in history. It's a political situation. This was a political trial, as far as I'm concerned, as far as a lot of other civil liberties organizations are concerned. My name is Edward Abington. I'm a former American diplomat. I thir spent 30 years uh, dealing mainly with the Middle East, uh, specifically Arab-Israeli issues. My last overseas assignment was as the American Consul General in Jerusalem from 1993 to 1997. We never received any uh, warnings or uh, caution about dealing with the Holy Land Foundation. They were considered to be a legitimate uh, American charity, and I was familiar with the work, with their work. Uh, they had a good reputation for uh, honesty and, and providing assistance uh, to the people who really needed it. But it's a law certainly in the last year since 9-11 has been aimed particularly at Muslims and not just charities, but Muslims who have any relationship at all with groups that the U.S. designates as terrorists. Now, what's interesting is the Zakat groups we, talked, we just talked about in the Holy Land 5 case, those were not designated as terrorists. You would think that if there were really front groups for Hamas, that the U.S. would have designated them, but they didn't. It just shows what a uh, really made up political persecution this was. The United States uh, has never labeled Zakat committees as controlled by Hamas or as being uh, terrorist organizations. And in fact, up until 2007, 2008, uh, AID was channeling assistance uh, through American NGOs working with Zakat committees. So the allegation that the Israelis made that these uh, organizations were basically controlled with Hamas was certainly not the view of the United States government at the time I was serving in Jerusalem, or for that matter, afterwards. And that was very contradictory. I mean, it was like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand was doing. As far as I'm concerned, they're just like many other people that have been unjustly jailed for their political activities. Defense was trying to say, Look, uh, the Justice Department is alleging that the Holy Land Foundation is supporting terrorism because they're working with Zakat committees. But we have a long list of projects funded by the U.S. government working with American NGOs who worked with Zakat committees. And we have the documentation to show this. Uh, the, the court kept a lot of that documentation out of the trial. These defendants, particular defendants, were giving money to the Zakat committees knowing it was going to Hamas. Whether it's legitimate or not really isn't at issue. It's whether they knew that the money that was being funneled to the committees were actually going to Hamas. And I think we established that at trial. But the United States government was also giving money to Zakat committee. Uh, you know, I don't remember that uh, as being, uh, uh, you know, it's been a long time. At a, at a minimum, you shouldn't be prosecuted for providing charitable activity to a group that has not even been put on a list 
so that you have notice that you're not supposed to be aiding it. I mean, they checked the list. They, 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 the, the, the board of HLF could check the list and they would say, okay, here's the groups that are on the list. We're not going to support any of those. Here's groups that are not on the list. We can support those. There's a case that I'm, I'm writing about right now in the United States, which is called the case of the Holy Land Foundation. There's been persecution and prosecutions of Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslims in America and all over the West, actually, for a very long time now. I'm sure you've all heard the term Islamophobia. Now, we're not, again, talking to some layman. This is my friend, Miko Pillet, the general's son. Father was a general in the Israeli army, great-grandfather, great, uh, great, uh, grandfa uh, uh, one of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence. We got an expert in this area. The case of the Holy Land Foundation is a, fund is, is a foundational case. The Holy Land Foundation in the United States was the largest Muslim charity in America, and it was run by Palestinians. Their focus was Palestine, but they, gave, they, brought, they offered relief after 9-11, after the Oklahoma City bombings, in floods, and earthquakes, not only in the U.S., but all around the world, in Turkey and other places. And, of course, tremendous relief they were able to offer in Palestine, helping the poorest of the poor. Hey, wonderful people. I make great friends like you. And I've been speaking to their lawyers, and I've never seen lawyers cry as much as the lawyers who represent these, these men. The frustration, where the defense case is so strong, the prosecution case is so weak, yet the prosecution wins time and time, appeal after appeal after appeal. You know about the case of the Holy Land Foundation that, I've been, that I'm writing about right now. Um, the book should come out next year, and I visited uh, Shukri Abu Bakr and Mufid Abdul Qadir and Abu Ibrahim Mazain uh, and Abdul Rahman Ode. I visited all of them in prison, federal prison here in the United States. None of them are oppressed. None of them are prisoners. I mean, even though they're they are in federal prison for very very long uh, sentences. They're all free men, and they speak like free men, and their spirit is strong. And, and so I don't feel like I speak for the oppressed. I feel like I'm speaking for friends of mine who are living in very harsh conditions that have been imposed on them, and that's the terrible injustice. So I'm speaking for that, you know, to, to, to remedy that, to correct the injustice. Um, and it's a very rewarding experience. Well, hold on, elaborate on this some more, because, okay, uh, jails for bad people, these people are in jail, they must be bad, what are you doing, I mean, representing, uh, is there a label on them, that they're ter I, I don't know really much of anything about it, except what you, you actually brought it to my attention, fill us in, because someone says, what do you represent terrorists for, what, what's going on with this? Well, the case of the Holy Land Foundation, the Holy Land Foundation was the largest Muslim charity in America at one time. And then uh, in December of 2001, after 9-11, President George Bush closed them down with an executive order claiming that they were a finance network for Hamas, for terrorism. Um, so this raises several issues. Number one, how does that happen? How do, how do you take a charity organization and suddenly conflate it with, te with, with supporting terrorism? Uh, how do you criminalize charity? You know, it, it takes some ingenuity, some creativity. And how do you label five men, good men, who did nothing wrong, in fact, did everything right and everything good, and suddenly label them terrorists and throw them in federal prison for very, very long, for many, many years? Um, and this has to do with, with the narrative that Palestinians are terrorists, that charity to Palestinian mean, Palestinians means you're encouraging terrorism. Uh, the claim was that they gave what is called material support to a terrorist organization by working with zakat committees in Palestine. And since the prosecution could never prove that a single penny from Holy Land Foundation actually went to any terrorist organization or any organization that is what is called recognized or, or, as, uh, or designated as a terrorist organization, they claimed that the, the zakat committees in Palestine are part of Hamas, which is not true. Now, every other organization around the world that provides relief for Palestine works with the Zakat committees. The only place, the only organization that was, that was actually accused of supporting terrorism by working with these committees is the Holy Land Foundation case in the trial that took place in the Northern District of Texas. 
everywhere else in the world and everywhere else here, even in the United States, USAID and the State Department and so on, still work with the Zakat committees. And of course, none of the Zakat committees were ever designated as terrorist organizations, quite the opposite. Um, so, Holy Land Foundation 5 did nothing wrong. They wouldn't support I th they, they wouldn't support terrorism anyway because these are good people. They wouldn't support violence anyway. They are Palestinian patriots. They did what they believe was the right thing to do, and I believe was the right thing to do, which is support their 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 their, their brothers and sisters in their homeland in Palestine. Um, but they had to be brought down because the narrative is that Palestinians are terrorists. And the narrative is that the Israelis are victims and the Palestinians are the perpetrators of violence. And so having a good, kind face to Palestinian charity doesn't work. And so they had to be taken down. And I believe it's a completely political case. It was a terrible injustice. They did nothing wrong. They are not terrorists. Um, I think there are probably more people in prison that don't deserve to be in prison than most people know. But in the case of these five people, there's actually no doubt, I think in anybody's mind, that they are completely innocent and they were put in this position only because this was a political trial. So I've been visiting them and meeting with them and meeting with their families and I met people who worked with them in Palestine and I met and I went to visit their homes in Palestine. Um, and uh, like I said, the book is coming out uh, all being well next year, uh, that will tell this terrible story of, of this injustice. Before I go into another question, you must have obviously, I mean, you wouldn't end up putting your name on something if you didn't really believe in the product, for example. In this case, you wouldn't stand behind certain individuals if they were terrorists. I don't know, if, I mean, unless somebody's crazy, deranged, you know, out of their mind. But you obviously must have done your homework. You must have really, I mean, uh, uh, looked into this before you started visiting someone in jail and then writing a book. And uh, so you're obviously well, I mean, very well informed in this area. And how much does a person have to dig in this area to see that, you know, there's some injustice going on or a lot of injustice? Well, actually, you don't have to dig very far. The, it's, 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 it's crystal clear. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take a lot to realize and to see that this was an injustice. It doesn't take a lot, actually, to see that there was, that these people were, um, that this whole trial was politically motivated, that this whole trial was put together, this whole accusation and, and the closing of the Holy Land Foundation and the prosecution of these five men uh, was politically motivated. It doesn't really take much. Um, the way the trial was conducted, um, the kind of evidence that was allowed to be brought in, which was completely unacceptable and irrelevant. Um, and um, so it actually doesn't take much. I did do my homework. I have been researching this for almost four years now. Uh, I've read thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of court documents and spoke to lawyers and, and, and read the appeals and read the opinions of, of, both, of, you know, of both sides. Um, and like I said, I visited the people in prison, I visited their families, I visited people in Palestine who worked with them, I know the things that they did, I've seen the projects. And there's no question in my mind that these men are innocent men and, and that their sentence should be at least commuted. If not, they, if, if not completely exonerated. Dear Mr. President, I have been writing a letter to you year after year. I am 11 years old now. I am one of the proud daughters of the Holy Land Five. My father and four other great men were put into jail for nothing. My father got 65 years. He did not hurt anyone or anything. If anything, he helped people. Now, the favor I really want from you is to free the HLF Five. You are the only one who can do this, and I hope you will. Did you know I have the same birthday as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Maybe that's why we think the same. Come on, Mr. President, we need you. Can you solve this case? I hope you think about this, and please, as soon as you can. Thank you. Sincerely, an American girl who wants her dad back.